Ah, welcome everybody, welcome viewers, welcome chip dippers, back to another Retro Recipes Quick Bites. These of course are the slightly shorter and more nostalgic looking format that we do, filmed with my original family camcorder made in the 90s. A lot of you said you like this format, so just when it's appropriate for the video subject, we'll keep doing them. And that subject is my bedroom computer, childhood computer recreation that I did a few months ago now. Over here, of course, as many of you already know, is my childhood uh, Commodore 64C. Not the actual unit, but the exact type that I had with this Australian style case uh, that you could retrofit your C64 with. But this, I'm pleased to say, is my original actual childhood Hinari Sunrise TV AM, or is it TV A1, sorry. <laughs> TV AM, of course, was a, good, a morning TV show in the UK. But this is the exact model that I bought from Boots as a kid when I was about 11, with my dad, of course. Um, and I'm proud to say it still works, and this is the exact image I would have seen on it of that Commodore 64 picture. Um, I'll slide out of the way so you can have a little closer look while I'm talking. Because the point of today's video is, I want to, well, I want to do one very important thing. See, this is just set up for computer use. But of course, when I was a kid, I would have also been watching TV on this. And I watched many very cool shows in my room. Not least Knight Rider and Street Hawk and Airwolf and Starsky and Hutch and Dukes of Hazard. The list goes on. And so this TV... Right now it's just serving one purpose, it's my Commodore 64 monitor. But I thought, wouldn't it be lovely to step back into the retro room here, into the Retro Recipes kitchen or studio, and just have, just find 80s shows playing on this TV, just like when I would walk back into my bedroom as a kid. So then I thought, I think there's a way to do that. In fact, a couple of ways. Under here, I'm going to show you, I have a little adapter or converter, which is how I get the picture from the Commodore. So let me show you that. And here it is. The light on the camcorder is automatically turned into night mode, so you can see a bit better. But yeah, basically, it takes the input from the uh, Commodore 64 here, and along with the audio left and right, and outputs it as an FM or UHF or VHF TV frequency. So they can then tune the TV into the channel that this device is outputting on. Right now you can see it's channel 21. Actually what we used to receive ITV on back in the UK. And I did a whole video about setting this up so I won't repeat everything. But basically, yeah, I just used the auto search at that point to search for that frequency. Of course, it's the only channel that came up because it's the only cable that's plugged, plugged into the back there. So that's coming straightly, straight from, straightly from that adapter Lee. <clears throat> But you might be wondering, well, how's that going to get us 80s TV? Well, frankly, I have no idea at the moment either. <laughs> You're in a work in progress thought process with me here. But as we wander around the studio, there's one thing I've considered. Over here, I can zoom in through the magic of 90s camcorder technology. This is the Commodore TV Tuner. As you can see, next to its very nice logo there, you can also choose frequency one, <laughs> one, <clears throat> three, or UHF. Again, it's already, it's already on there. I, ah, there it is, UHF. Uh, then you can Syntonia or tune, tuning. And um, also, obviously, very important, turn it on. And your monitor sits on top in these little handy little uh, footprints. And I thought about getting this out and setting it all up for you, but of course there's no point because those original terrestrial TV channel broadcasts are no longer happening. So this would just guaranteed display static. But there are the video and audio outputs, similar kind of thing as my adapter. And then you could use this to change channels and receive. And this was designed actually for monitors, um, very much like the Sony that I've got over there, or this Commodore one, in fact, it's designed exactly for this to sit on top of because these didn't have built-in tuners, they couldn't receive TV, and that thingy would allow them to receive TV on this thingy. Fantastic. Oh, that does look good through there, doesn't it? This is my original uh, childhood Lego setups that I thank thankfully didn't dismantle and just put in a box. And uh, Lady Frankly helped me repair the bits that had snapped off 
in shipping from the UK. Uh, that one I bought a little later when I worked on that movie, but I'd like to talk about that. Tempting though it is to give you an entire tour of the whole studio uh, in this format. Let me know if you want that in the comments. But that's not what this is about. Is it Bobby Bear? No. Thank you. You know, people quite rudely say I, I never grew up with all this nostalgia nonsense. But that's not true at all, is it Bobby? No, Daddy. Thank you. Now, here's what I've come up with of how to achieve this goal. Over here, put him down there. No, not put him down, you understand what I'm saying. Um, over here, of course, is the TV. And in a drawer over there next to it is, I think, the solution. Well, I've got it out of the drawer to save you any suspense. This is a Raspberry Pi 4 starter kit sent to us very kindly a few months ago by Mars Study. Mars Tuddy. Mar Study. Mars 2D? Anyway, it's not 2D, it's 3D. <laughs> Let's go through and just unbox all of this properly for the first time. We've got <clears throat> insert breaking glass sound effect, some HDMI cables. As, oh, a very snazzy case. I think we'll probably use this in our project. That's nice actually, isn't it? Not even 3D printed, just 3D. Uh, we've got my biggest fan. We'll definitely implement that as well. And here is, of course, the PCB itself for the Raspberry Pi 4. Still, still an amazing piece of kit that fascinates and uh, amazes me to this day. So there's that. The PCB, of course, reminds us all of, and may have even been made by, <coughs> PCB Way, where you can, of course, get great quality PCBs, just like that Raspberry Pi, or these ones that they kindly made for me for a, a upcoming project from just five dollars. Can you believe that? I can't. But back to this PCB because this is the one we're going to be using today. Because as we all know, PCB stands for. Um, let me let me just think about that. Hold on. Where's the pause button? Come. Perry Fractic's childhood bedroom. What are you all doing in my bedroom, Lizzie Parkers? Um, let me show you what I think we can do with this. Oh, it also comes with the power supply and a little USB-C switch for on-off functionality on a Raspberry Pi. Very good. Forgot to show you that. Thank you. Bye. But yes, as for how to find a way to actually access those TV shows, if you go to My 80s TV, I'm going to click on that. And look what loads up. Now I showed this with Lady Fractic on an episode of The Retro Show very recently. But look, it's got, not only has it got just a really cool interface here with this Cafe 80s, shall we say, style logo there. But you can choose your favorite genres. You can do, you know, multiple or none or none wouldn't be, <laughs> be much point in doing that. But let's let's think here. We What, what would I have watched? Drama would have been Included Knight Rider and all those shows, of course. Kids TV as well. Now, this will be American themed, but I've got a potential solution for that as well, so stay tuned. MTV, you've got to have that. That's probably good enough for now. Um, trailers and stuff would, would be nostalgic, I suppose, as well. And then I think you just hit the power button down there. Guys, it is the 80s. And we've just, by pure chance, tuned in live to Live Aid. So it's happening right now, guys. There's Bob. So you get the idea of where I'm going with this. I want to get the Raspberry Pi to display just this portion of the image here. Oh, and I will just show you my idea for getting BBC and UK versions of this. There's a few YouTube channels that actually show live broadcasts from, you know, BBC One, that kind of thing. <laughs> Not quite what I remember. Oh, it's a commercial. Awesome. Gosh, memories unlocked. Monkey Magic, not a British show, but was on. Oh, probably would have watched this a lot as a teenager, for some reason. Um, and the weather. 
the southeast. It's moving away eastwards. Come on, that guy was part of my childhood as well. And this is called Retro Reminiscing, this channel, flicking through 1981 British TV channels. There it is. Got our four USB ports, our Ethernet, so we're connecting to the internet. We've got SD card slot there, and uh, power, and micro HDMI and audio there. And uh, I put the GPIO riser in there just in case we need it later. It'll always be in here ready to go. But there it is. This is essentially our TV. I mentioned Ethernet there, and you might be wondering how am I going to get internet into here all the way over there. Um, I don't have Ethernet lying around in every corner of the studio, but I do have this. Oh, I love this device. I've used it in multiple projects, and I've got a couple of them now. This is by Volnets. I'll put a link in the description. Um, but it's a Ethernet to Wi-Fi adapter. You basically configure this by plugging this into a computer and tell it what IP address or automatic um, things and what Wi-Fi to connect to, and it will then connect to your home Wi-Fi and broadcast that Wi-Fi out as if it were Ethernet. So all I have to do, this is how simple things can be sometimes, is plug that in there. Now we've got internet going into the Pi. Plug here, this into here, and now we've got power going into the internet. And then uh, this will be powered via the Pi from the Pi's PSU which of course is over here. So it'll all turn on and off with just one switch. So that's how we get this online. Now let's go get it connected. And you might also be wondering, well, how do we connect it to the TV and get the picture in there? Of course, I showed you the little adapter that connects the Commodore 64 to the TV. So I'm going to use a similar method. But the only problem is the Raspberry Pi outputs as shown through HDMI. So I can plug these in here. That's now going to be the output of the picture. It's coming out HDMI. And obviously that's a 1980s TV and that adapter isn't HDMI either. But another favorite device of mine that I've been using a lot is this. I uh, don't know the brand, but I'll put again a link in the description to all the stuff I use and, and you can see this and other things. It's not uh, AV or composite to HDMI, which is the usual way around. This is much harder to find. It's HDMI to AV or S video if you prefer. It lets you take a really good quality picture and make it terrible. <laughs> That's the idea of this. So again, there it's got a power out, which again is USB. So again, our, our Raspberry Pi is going to be powering everything that goes in there. And then all the way on the other end of the adapter is this. So remember I showed you composite coming from the, the C64C and audio going into that adapter. Well, here we do the same thing. We have composite and audio. Uh, and with a little Y cable like this, ta-da, Y cable. So what can actually happen is the output from the Raspberry Pi can be split uh, along with the output from the Commodore 64, which will come here instead. And both of those will feed into the little adapter. So basically, whichever one I have turned on is what will be, dis be displayed on the TV. So I turn off the Commodore 64, turn on the Raspberry Pi, and this little switch, hey presto, I should have TV images. So let's go set that up. Oh, exciting! Now you are under the table with me. I'm going to unplug 
64 came from the Commodore 64 and uh, as mentioned place it into this Y cable and then this instead becomes that input that came from the Commodore 64 into that TV tuner just there and that should give us the output I'm actually going to try configuring it on the Hinari TV itself oh, we mustn't forget our audio of course ah hang on problem hmm. Oh, of course we must remember to plug in the HDMI to the actual adapter. That's kind of the entire point of it. And then here's what I was looking for just now. These are male-to-male -male adapters. So they will allow these males to become females. And these then can successfully connect to there. Again, that means we're splitting the Commodore 64 and the Raspberry Pi into the same input. Yes. Let's go see if we get a picture. And actually, I can tell we have got a picture because I left the Commodore 64 on for this very purpose. They're now conflicting with each other. So all I have to do, if I want TV, Let's turn off the C64. Let's try it. Interesting. So that doesn't look great, does it? In fact, it was so bad, the camera is even having a hard time focusing. Um, but I am wondering, this guy here, of course, I usually use it over... Um, what? Sorry, I just saw a bug, literally. Um, yes, excuse me for that. I was saying I typically use it when I'm connecting to the HDMI output of the A500 Mini or the C64 Mini just to display those on, you know, again, an old retro TV like this. And those devices are NTSC for the American format TVs. But look, we have an NTSC PAL switch. So I'm going to flick it and let's see if it works. Yes. <laughs> now you can't see how good this looks because of the refresh rate of the camera uh, conflicting with the PAL refresh rate of this British TV. But trust me, that is the most steady image you could imagine. And if I've given anyone a seizure, I apologize. Yeah, so I've set my iPhone to 25 frames per second, which means you can now see the image. It's still slightly going out of sync with the actual reality of the image, but yeah, beautifully steady image not what you're actually seeing through the camcorder. Now the Mars Study Raspberry Pi comes with its own SD card which should have the full operating system so I'm going to plug that in. Now just for a one-time configuration I set up a little USB and mouse combo here. I could actually connect the Commodore 64 keyboard through a Kira version 2 um, but they're very hard to get hold of and all mine are in use. Well, I say all mine two of mine are in use. Uh, and so I'm just using a regular keyboard. Or is it regular? No. Welcome everybody to the Chicken Lips Pets Keyboard. This is a completely non-profit project that I've been working on for a couple of years and it gives you full Petski keyboard layout and a fully functional key map for using this with any vice-based Commodore 64 emulators. And it gives you, uh, of course, run stop, restore the Commodore key, and everything you'd expect from a Commodore keyboard, like uh, insert, delete, clear home, even the, the Pi. But from that Pi, back to this Pi. Well, if you do want to get one of these, again, completely non-profit, but you'll find the link at perifractic.com, and you can purchase it from WASD Keyboards. Their stuff isn't cheap, but no keyboards of this kind of quality uh, are cheap. However, as with everything, you don't have to buy it, but if you do, you get what you pay for. Now I won't subject you to the full setup process, but uh, I don't know if you can even see the mouse cursor. But it says click next, so I'm going to click next and go through the setup. Now, now I don't want to use too much iPhone in this video for obvious reasons, but can we just talk about for a second the quality of the Hinari picture? Even on this kind of, you know, high resolution Raspberry Pi display here. That is really good. <laughs> good job Hinari. Good job Boots. Now we can choose Wi-Fi. Wait, 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 wait. Did this Raspberry Pi have Wi-Fi on board? So I don't even need this Ethernet thing? Holy moly. 
Of course, it's a Raspberry Pi 4. I'm an idiot. Ah, oh, okay. Connect to my home Wi-Fi. <laughs> wow. Still, I hope you liked seeing that Wi-Fi thingy. There we go. That's brilliant. So we'll save this for another project. And now we have the desktop. It actually looks a bit better through your camera, doesn't it? Um, but I don't see... Yeah, <laughs> we have still lost the edge of the screen. So let me try and fix that. It's not allowing me to change the screen size. I can only move the screen around. So um, that's okay, I think, though, because we've loaded the internet here. And of course, that's in a window. So let's try uh, my80stv.com. See how far we can get. Stop our cassette that's playing music. And we are teleporting. Oh, so it's actually squished the ratio uh, from HDMI 16x9 down to 4x3 for this. Um, I think the adapter's doing that. So that's something we're going to have to fix. But let's just try the default. Turn this on. There it is. Change channel. Goodness. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Let me play around with it some more. Wait. Wait. I found a solution. Look, you right click on HDMI 2, and that's where they put resolution now. Um, I haven't used this for a long time, but I can switch that to a 4x3 resolution. So let's try rebooting. <laughs> uh, so let's turn it on again. Some Kim Wilde playing there. All right, now let me try to zoom in. Now apparently if we press F, it will be full screen. Let's try it. so close. Okay, uh, just googled it. If you press F11, you might get full screen. <laughs> Look at these full colours shining through here. It's an 80s TV. Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, I was just channel hopping and... Uh, <clears throat> Nineteen eighty four. Get rid of that mouse cursor. <laughs> I didn't even realize it's Night Rider. Don't forget one. I haven't forgotten. Just hope this guy shows up. to leave you and just watch this episode this is fantastic absolutely classic stuff there um i was just watching this episode and kit told the arnold schwarzenegger lookalike to get the dumbbell off his hood of course by dumbbell he meant the guy himself <laughs> uh well this is meant to be a quick video and they're quick to make but this one's getting a little bit long in the tooth a bit like the 80s really but we still love them so there it is my 80s tv is set up and i can turn it on anytime i want i've hidden all the mouse and keyboard and stuff i'm going to just add the uh, chromium browser to the auto startup sequence so that it loads up to this exact web page 
uh, I'll set this as the default home page in Chromium. And then all I need to do, if anything, is hit full screen. <laughs> and there's the episode repeating. It was a dumbbell joke there. Well, from that dumbbell and this dumbbell, it's time to wish you, not dumbbells, uh, a big cheerio and thank you so much for watching. I will leave you with the high quality Star Wars style, almost ind indiscernible from Star Wars itself, end credits showing all the supporters who make this channel and these incredibly high quality videos possible. So I'm just getting worried about Michael. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs> Until next time, subscribe and support below. And cheerio. As long as there's music, who cares? Tell me something. You ever relax? Put on some skates and run the boardwalk? If that's an invitation, I'll even bring the ghetto blaster. <laughs> well, I'll see you later. Showtime. Let's go. You got a date?